and welcome back ladies. If you're new here, my name is Jax and I have shared our four year long journey through infertility, IVF, adoption, parenting, and now pregnancy. This week is my 29 week update with our little IVF baby. And this week we are talking about birth planning and stronger kicks and spinning babies. Stick around. This week's update should be short and sweet, but let's kick it off like we always do with a little baby update. Little baby Kingsley is about the size of a New England cottontail rabbit this week, which puts him a little over 15 inches long and definitely hitting that three pound mark by this week. So at 29 weeks, baby's eyes are still really fuzzy. Uh, even newborn sight is still really sketchy, uh, but definitely this week they can respond to light if you were to like put a flashlight on your stomach, they might respond to it and shy away. Um, the other thing they are developing this week is the ability to cry and hiccup and even cough in the womb, which is crazy to think about that all those things like happen silently and stuff, but they are happening. Um, I don't think I mentioned it, but at our 28 week scan, the ultrasound tech even pointed out that he was hiccuping and I cannot feel it, by the way. Still cannot like discern hiccups from anything else, but yeah, she's like, look, he's hiccuping. And I'm like, that's really cute. I can't feel it. <laughs> On to the mommy update. This week I am weighing in at 158 pounds, somewhere around there, which does put me at like nine and a half pounds over starting weight. If you caught last week's update, you know I had the stomach flu and I dipped down really drastically. <laughs> so I am slowly crawling back up uh, those few pounds that I lost. Um, really, it's just trying to get my system full of food again and make up for those few days where I didn't get enough calories. So climbing back up uh, on the weight chart, uh, measuring around 32 inches around the widest part of my belly. So like I said, there was definitely a shift in belly size as far as uh, a few weeks ago to now, um, but more or less, it's more like that it's coming out. So I don't think that translates to the tape measure very well, um, but let's do bump shots right now. This is what we look like from the front today. The shirt on. Here's from the side. From the side without the shirt on. Still got that big divot going on. Still carrying pretty high. And then from the front. You can kind of see from the side now. Moving on to symptoms. This week, the most noticeable thing has been that the kicks and jabs are definitely reaching that kind of take your breath away um, level where he hits me out of the blue in just the right spot and I like physically react. Um, supposedly this is the last week of them growing in intensity and then they should go down, but it's definitely he catches me in the spine or the bladder and I'm like, oh gosh, and like, I'm glad I'm not like on a video call at work or else they'd be really confused. <laughs> work, oh, and by the way, my, my coworkers, Still don't know. I still just haven't told them. I'm debating on how long to wait now. Obviously my boss knows. Manager robot continues to be a manager robot. I'll put that story in next week's update. Um, but yeah, none of my coworkers know, really. So <laughs> I don't know when I'm supposed to tell them. I don't know what the COVID protocol is <laughs> for, for telling people when you exist only on Zoom. When do you tell people? This week we had the birth planning session with our doula, which was so good. I, I just wanna put it out there that I felt so much better coming away from that. I thought it'd be mostly, not busy work, but like going through like what I already knew or expected. And she was able to add so much more um, color and depth and options to what I already knew. Um, I continue to say this, but I love my doula and I, every inter um, interaction with her really makes me feel good and I learned something from it. So I really have enjoyed her services so far. I'll leave my full review, I'm sure, uh, once we actually get through the birth, but so far she's been super helpful. Um, definitely, we went really in depth around, you know, how I want the mood to be, around the room as far as that. Some things that I do and don't want. Uh, one of the things I brought up to her was 
I really don't want people asking me if this is my first baby. Um, super triggering. Um, and when I go to like medical appointments, I, I'm kind of like braced for it and ready to give our whole spiel like, no, this isn't our first baby. We have a one and a half year old daughter who joined her family via adoption. I've had two other pregnancies that have ended in miscarriages. This is my first time getting to the third trimester. This will be, you know, my first birth. So I get like, do the whole spiel and I'm like ready for it. But with so many people coming in and out of the room during labor and delivery, like I really don't want to have to give that spiel a bunch. So we talked about different strategies for communicating that and trying to mitigate um, that point of stress. Obviously it's very important medically for them to know this is my first delivery. Um, and that's at the heart of it, what they're trying to get to with that question. Um, but it comes with all that baggage. So we talked over that. Um, we also talked over inductions and wow, do I feel like so much better <laughs> when we talked over the different medications used for like dilating and softening your cervix. And we talked about Pitocin and essentially if you go in, I think the biggest takeaway from that was if you go in knowing that you can stop the Pitocin at any time and knowing what the signals are that your body is taking over, um, and matching those up, like stopping your Pitocin when your body is actually picking up the slack and, and starting its own contractions. So you don't get kind of these double intensity contractions. You don't get your body naturally contracting along with the augmentation of Pitocin. Um, and if you can hit that balance, right, then you can still very much have, you know, an, un, um, pain medicated birth and and not reach these like oh my god levels of contractions and um it was like i said it was just really good we talked through each of those steps and she is definitely um assisted with non uh, pain medicated inductions before which is just not a story i hear a whole bunch uh everyone's like you get pitocin it's the devil juice and then you get you know epidural to cope with it so it was nice to hear from her side not only like you can do it but like here's a plan of how we actually accomplish that. So um, these other women are not crazy. Like things can get out of control with inductions um, pain wise. Here's how we like mitigate it. So that was really good. And I'm trying to think, oh, we talked about little Kingsley still being breech. So I have an appointment right at 31 weeks because it's going to be a week before my 32 week scan um, for her to come over and do some spinning babies techniques. Um, if you're not familiar with that, you can go Google it. It's exactly what it sounds. It's a step, a series of steps to try to get your baby to flip um, that don't involve like manual manipulation of the abdomen. Um, so in her words, she's like, if your baby isn't going to flip, they're not going to flip. I'm not going to make them flip, but we can make sure that they have all the room they could possibly want to do accomplish that. And so I think it involves some massage of ligaments and things like that. That'll be in next week's update. Anyway, uh, so we're gonna try. <laughs> we're gonna try to spin this baby or at least give him the room he needs to if he wants to. There's a lot of reasons babies don't spin, so try not to get too obsessed with it, but we wanna give it a good old college try before that next scan. <laughs> And finally, this is more or less to hold me accountable. I have not scheduled our hospital tour yet. So I need to do that. And I'm putting it out here on the internet so that I do that because it was definitely on my list and I definitely didn't do it. So that needs to happen. Our breastfeeding class is next week. Uh, I feel like a lot of like appointments and stuff got all clustered right in these early 30s. I feel like it's that hurry up and wait. And then it's like you get all this done by 32 weeks and then you just sit there very patiently <laughs> waiting for labor to start. So uh, the next few weeks have a bunch of little appointments and I'm excited to see that. If you want to like hear more in depth about the birth plan, I kind of have that on my list of, of potential videos if you care then leave a comment, let me know. If you're like, no, I don't care about your birth plan, then let me know that too. <laughs> and I will skip it and not make it and it'll be fine. Um, but if there's any other ones, um, obviously what's in my hospital bag is on my, my potential video list. And yeah, let me know if there's other things. What do other people do? I should go look at other pregnancy channels. I swear I don't really watch a whole bunch of them. For the family update, we are just busy. Um, we are starting to see friends again as people get vaccinated and we are hanging out with grandparents as the weather gets nicer. I think it just motivates us to get out there and 
Other than, like, every chance I get, I'm trying to get some extra rest, but we are just go, go, go to try to get a lot of things done before um, baby gets here, before I become an absolute just couch potato. I can feel the impending immobili immobility <laughs> of my own body. And so I think I'm, I'm rushing too to try to get some things done and get some social things in done before it's just like naps every day, all day naps. <laughs> all right, that is all I have for this week. I as always, appreciate that you took the time to sit here and spend some time with me. Um, I love hearing from all of you and all of your journeys. Um, and until next time, ladies, keep on fighting. Mwah.